Your English is good and your notes are excellent. So why aren't you scoring higher than 21 on the TOEFL IBT listening section? Hello, my name is Mr. Hearn and I am your TOEFL tutor. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how to take notes in the listening section so that you can not only earn a higher score than 21, but 27 or higher. Listen up, this is how it works. Let's first talk about academic lectures. Academic lectures often give my students the hardest time because it's a lot of information, right? And it gets to be very confusing and overwhelming and your brain just wants to shut off and go, what are they talking about? ETS does this on purpose. You have to understand that the TOEFL IBT is not a fair test of English. It's a test of how well you know how to take the TOEFL. That's it. It's not an academic test. It's a test of how well you know how to take the TOEFL. So when taking notes, you want to take fewer notes, but more relevant notes. You want to take notes just of what they're going to ask you about. Why do I say this? Because ETS puts a lot of additional information in the passages to overwhelm you, to create anxiety, confusion, and to trick you into picking wrong choices. You see, most people, and this might be you, will listen to try to learn the subject and take extensive notes so you can use your notes to answer the questions. ETS knows this and they've designed the test to overwhelm you and to trick you into picking wrong choices. How do we overcome this? Understand how the test works, take fewer notes, and use your notes to eliminate wrong choices based on the rules. You see, the test doesn't have right answers. It has only the credited answer. In fact, some of the credited answers make no sense, okay? And ETS knows that you're looking for the right answer, so they put choices that are definitely wrong in there based on their rules, and the credited choice will be kind of sort of related to the passage, but it's not right, it's just not wrong. Now, when you're taking notes in the academic lectures, this is what you wanna listen for. Listen for repeated words. ETS has a way of saying a, a sentence and then they'll say another sentence and a third sentence and they all have the same main topic and meaning but they're said in a little bit of different way. You see, this is how your brain gets confused. You hear the same thing three different times, but you're trying to take notes of everything and your brain's like, wait a minute, that, they're saying the same thing. And then they say it again. And your brain's like, what, that, that doesn't make sense. Why are they saying the same thing over and over again? And then you miss the important things. While the test is confusing you, you miss the information that they're gonna ask you about. Knowing how ETS uses the language to confuse you and overwhelm you is a key to getting a high score. So when you hear the same sentence said three different ways, just write it down once. What's the main idea and what did they say about it? When they use emphasized words, that's words with a different, a little more inflection to them, listen to what they say and write down just the topic and a couple of words of what they said about it. Don't listen to everything. You're not listening to learn. You're listening to remember what they said. Okay, and there's a reason for this. Now, another thing that ETS uses to present information they're going to ask about is to say numbers. When you hear numbers like, there are two reasons for this. Well, write down one, two. And when they say the first reason, write down the topic and a couple of words of what they said about it. And then when you have the second one, write down the topic and a couple of words of what they said about it. If they say, there are three features to this flower, okay, write down one, two, three, and write down the feature and the details that go with it. I can assure you that this will be the answer to one of your multiple point questions. Another thing that ETS uses to indicate that they're about to give you information they're going to test you on is pictures. When they show a picture on the screen, the professor is going to give you a description of the picture. Listen to what they say and write down just the topic and a couple of words of what they say. Remember, we're taking notes so we can see our notes and remember what we heard. 
We're going to use what we remember to eliminate wrong choices. Another thing that ETS uses to give information, that's an indicator that they're going to give you information that is important, is when a student asks a question. Now, listen, this is very important because it's the most common thing that ETS does. They, they have a student ask the professor a question and listen to the professor's answer. Now, listen to me. Don't listen to the whole answer. You're not trying to learn a subject. You just want to know what did the professor say directly to answer that question? What is the topic? And just two or three words that they use to give a description of what they say about the topic. They usually either give a description of the topic or something that the topic is doing. We're not taking notes like we do in college because no one's going to collect up your notes and grade them. They're going to collect up your notes and destroy them. This is not for a grade. You're taking notes to help your short-term memory. Remember what you heard, and then you're going to use your memory to eliminate wrong choices based on the rules. This is important. Write it down. The rules of elimination for the listening section are anything that is not mentioned in the passage and anything that is different from what was stated in the passage. This is important because, you know, ETS knows you're a very educated person, that you're highly intelligent, that it's likely that you may know something about the passage that you're listening to. They'll have choices in the answers that are true in the real world, but they're not true on the test because the rules state, if it isn't stated in the passage, it's wrong. Or they may have choices that are similar to what's in the passage, but they're different. Anything that's different is wrong. One of the tricks that they pull is that they'll have a sentence that you know is in the passage. But if it doesn't answer the question, it's wrong. Knowing how the test works and knowing how to take fewer notes, but more relevant notes, gives you that higher score even if your English isn't great. I have students that could barely speak English and still score 27 in the listening section because they only listen for specific things. And they use those specific things to eliminate choices that are different from what they heard or not mentioned. Conversations are another issue. In conversations, most of my students don't have much difficulty with conversations. But there are a few things you want to know. Again, don't take extensive notes. Your notes are only to help you to remember what was said. You want to listen more than you write and use what you remember to eliminate wrong choices based on the rules that anything that's not stated in the passage or anything that's different from what was stated in the passage is wrong. All right, I hope that this helped you to raise your score on the TOEFL IBT listening section. If you need more help, if you want exactly step-by-step -step directions on how to take notes and how ETS overwhelms you with too much English, I show you how to do that in my online video course. You can click on the link in the description and raise your score, pass your stupid TOEFL, blah, 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 pass your TOEFL IBT and get on with your life. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.